Do you want to learn how to get multiple credit cards and stack all of these great credit cards that everyone talks about? Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to credit card stack on the personal side and on the business side. So you can take advantage of all of these amazing 0% interest rate business and personal credit cards. Let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of the credit card stacking masterclass, guys. I am your host, credit coach, Nicole Scott. And if you haven't by now, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel. Show me some love by giving me a huge thumbs up. Leave me a comment below because that helps my channel reach a wider audience. And if you are new to my channel, make sure that you watch all of the different videos listed in the description below because I'm giving you guys the information that you need to know not what you want to hear just to make a sale because if you knew better, you do better. So let's go ahead and get into it today, guys. We are talking about credit card stacking and these can be on the personal side or the business side. It's the same concept on either side. However, the goal is to build up your personal credit so that way we can put all of our business credit cards under our business, of course, right? But they do require personal credit. So we gotta build up our personal credit get high limit comparable credit so that way we can get high limit credit on the business side, okay? And those business credit cards, most of them do not report to the personal credit. A few of them do, like the Capital One Sparks card, and I would never recommend that you get that, plus Capital One pulls from all three credit bureaus. The lenders list that I gave you in part one, that gives you a bunch of different banks that you can go to that are only gonna pull from one credit bureau. And again, the goal with credit stacking is to apply for three to five cards that pull from, say, Experian, three to five from TransUnion, three to five from Equifax. So you have a bunch of different cards that you got at the same time. This method is best for business owners because we don't wanna kill our credit history on our personal side. If you're credit stacking on the personal side, I would stick to about two to three cards because you don't wanna get too much new credit too soon. Because if you get more than five cards within the last 24 months, before you get your chase cards, you're not gonna qualify. So some of the first five credit cards that you wanna get on the personal side are gonna be with chase. But of course, you're gonna need at least a 720 credit score with Experian in order to apply with Chase because Chase is an Experian bank. They're more of an elite bank. They are looking for those higher credit scores of 720 plus and really they're looking for all of the data points that we talked about in part one of this credit card stacking masterclass, okay? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the risks. I'm gonna give you some tips, some tricks, all of that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. So with the credit card stacking risks, I always wanna be forthcoming with you because again, guys, I'm giving the information that you need to know, not what you wanna hear to get a sale. Because again, if you knew better, you would do better. So let's go ahead and get into these risks because you wanna make sure you're doing things the right way, okay? People think that there's a shortcut in life. People think that there's hacks. There is no hacks. Like, yeah, there's information, but there's no shortcuts. If it sounds too good to be true, guess what? I hate to tell you, but it is. I know, I know that's not what you wanna hear. And you'll probably click off my channel because I'm giving you what you need to know, not what you want to hear, right? Um, so actually, I'm that one on YouTube that's going to keep it totally real with you about credit because, again, there's a lot of misinformation out there. I won't drop no names because it's just not right. But boy, oh boy, is there misleading information out there. So um, providing false information on credit applications can get you into some hot water. Because say, for example, you fluff your income and you say, well, I'm gonna use my household income and my household income is about $175,000 a year. And then the bank comes back and they want 
bank statements or they want pay stubs or they want tax returns. These are very real scenarios. So you want to be very careful. Now, in some cases, it's okay to use your household income on your credit application as long as it's, you know, somewhat real. If they do ask for proof, you would be able to provide them with some financial records, even if they're not spot on the number that you gave them, they're still kind of up there. Because if you're telling them 175 and you're not even breaking a hundred, that's a huge difference, right? And that's going to bring up some red flags. And you know, the banks and with all this AI and technology that we have these days, they generally know more information about you than you know about you. So just know when you put this information on your credit applications, chances are they probably already know this information. They just wanna see if you're being honest or not, okay? So make sure that you're being truthful and you know if you want to fluff the numbers, make sure that it makes sense for you, okay? I'm not telling you to lie because you certainly don't, but one way that you can fluff it is using the household income. But of course, if you were using your spouse's income and your income, you would have to have, you know, tax documents and statements and things of that from both parties to prove that data. Now, another risk when it comes to credit card stacking is using a credit profile that is thin or weak when you are applying. And in part one of this video, I actually went over the data points and what you need to look like when you apply for credit, what a real strong credit candidate looks like. And you know, if you need to go back and watch through that, go ahead. It doesn't need to be exactly, but similar. You know, you need to have anywhere from 10 to 20 trade lines on your personal credit. The more trade lines you have on the personal credit and on the business credit that are paid as agreed, the more credible you are. That's how banks rate you, okay? If you pay your bills on time, if you manage your debt obligations properly, they will have no problem giving you the funds that you need. Because again, banks need to lend money to make money. They are a business, okay? Another high risk thing is applying for credit cards with an unstructured business. And I see this all the time where they pull the trigger way too quickly. Their business is not structured properly. It's not set up. If the bank goes to look for some sort of website or online listing, it's like you're a ghost and you don't even exist. So that is one of the fastest ways to get you denied. If you need help structuring your business or more information on that, you can visit the links below in the description to connect more. Another credit card stacking risk is visiting financial institutions that do not provide services for your line of work. And I see this a lot because of course I am a credit coach. I work with a lot of credit repair companies. I actually help a lot of people start their credit repair business. And again, if you are looking to repair your credit, you're better off doing it yourself. I can show you exactly how to do it because in this day and age, you're not gonna have success with a credit repair company, okay? All of that is over with, okay? And I'm telling you right now, Experian and TransUnion are gonna send you nothing but stall letters saying that they don't think it's from you. So you're better off learning how to do it yourself if you really wanna do this the right way, okay? Now, if you are in credit repair and you go and apply with a bank like Navy Federal, they are gonna deny you quick. If they even see the word credit on your website, it's an automatic denial. Some banks, do not work with anyone in the credit space. Business credit, personal credit, if they see the word credit on your website, it is a no-go. So if you are in the credit space, your business name has the word credit in it, do not go to Navy Federal because you are gonna get denied. You have to look for banks that are gonna do business with someone that would have the name credit, or the word credit in their name, which I would, I totally am against that. Keep your business name very vague. Watch some of my other videos where we talk about setting up your business properly. But if you've already done that and it's too late, 
obviously you're going to have to find some banks that are going to work with you. Same thing with like trucking, logistics companies. If you have the word trucking in your business name, it could potentially get you in that high risk category. So you're going to need to work with banks that work with people in the trucking industry. Okay. And let's just be honest. Sometimes not every financial institution is going to be welcoming to all different types of business owners. That's just how it is. Another risk when it comes to credit card stacking is applying for too many credit cards too soon. And I covered this briefly earlier, but let's just kind of reiterate what that means. So if you're credit card stacking on the personal side, I would recommend applying for anywhere between two to three banks per credit bureau. So two to three with Experian, two to three with TransUnion, two to three with Experian. If you're on the business side, three to five. Okay. You can go a little bit more because our business credit cards are not going to report to our personal credit. If we all of a sudden had nine new credit cards reporting to our personal credit, our credit score would tank because our history would go down to almost nothing. Right. And now we're a risk because we got too much credit too soon. Those accounts have not been established long enough. So you're really not going to be able to go after more funding on the personal side until you let all of those accounts age. And even, you know, on the business side, they want to see credit cards that have been established for at least minimum 24 months. So again, there's nothing fast about credit. This whole process does take time and it just kills me when people say you could just fix your credit within seven to 14 days, three to six months. No, it doesn't work like that because they, the banks want to see your ability to repay back debt as agreed. That is not something that can be rushed. Okay. It takes time. It's an organic thing. Okay. And that's what it's like in the real world with credit instead of these fantasy worlds that all of these brand new credit repair people specialize in because it's just not true. So there's a lot of misleading information out there, guys. And if you want the real deal credit information, you need to follow me, Credit Coach Nicole Scott on Instagram, because I am that one on YouTube that is going to give you the information that you need to know, not what you want to hear. We all want to hear things that sound great, almost sound too good to be true, right? Well, guess what? It is because if you knew better, you would do better. And if it sounds too good to be true, then why doesn't everyone have it that easy? Okay. You have to ask yourself that if it was really that easy, everyone would have personal credit and business credit, but it's obviously not right. It is, but it isn't. So it's complicated, but don't believe the hype. I'm telling you right now. So applying for too many credit cards too soon could really hurt you on the personal side. Now on the business side, it's a different story. Once you have your personal credit structured, you've got anywhere from four to six credit cards that have at least a 24 month history. Then you're ready to go over to the business side. Now on the personal side, I would say a good number of credit cards to have is about six to eight. Okay. Six to eight. And again, only balances on maybe one or two of those cards below a 10% of the available credit. And you want to try to get as many business credit cards as possible using your personal credit. So that way those new cards don't report to your personal credit, which take down your history and, you know, adding a new credit card to your personal side is maybe, you know, one to two a year. Okay. That's really what you can afford to add on the personal side to not really get flagged or for lenders to say, well, you have too many new accounts. No, no. Go after like one to two credit cards a year, maybe one every six months or so. That's just one inquiry on one, you know, bureau and go with credit unions, try to get some higher limits, you know, add a couple high limit trade lines to your credit profile to help you get high limits. So you can have comparable credit on the personal side, which will lead over to the business side. Now trade lines are not going to help you when it comes to the business side. If you already have an established credit profile on the personal side and you're just adding trade lines to help enhance your score because maybe you just took a hit but it's already cleared up you just need that score to go up 
great. Trade lines are going to be perfect for you. But as far as the business side goes, they want to see your ability, not somebody else's. They don't want to see a synthetic credit profile. They want to see what you look like as a consumer and if you are a reliable person or if you're a risk. So that's why we really want to structure our personal credit properly so we can leverage it on the business side and not add too many credit cards on the personal side too quickly okay so really credit card stacking is really meant for businesses okay if you are going to do it on the personal side you know you're going to be like whatever you get is, is probably going to be it for the year okay just to be honest with you so let's go ahead and move on to some of the credit card stacking risks when it comes to submitting your application in the appropriate order. Now, I talked about this briefly. For example, if Chase is on your list of credit cards to get, obviously Chase is gonna be an application that you wanna submit in person, especially on the business side or on the personal side. I would recommend going into a Chase branch meeting with a banker, whether it's personal or business, submitting your application with them directly and having that be the first application that you submit. Because if you submit Chase after you apply for other places, it's going to be a no-go. Like Chase is very inquiry sensitive, like PenFed and some of these other places, they're very inquiry sensitive. So most places that are going to be inquiry sensitive, you want to apply for those places first, like Chase and PenFed. Truist is kind of inquiry sensitive. You know, a lot of places don't want to see more than three inquiries in the last 12 months. Now, I showed you my profile data points. I had seven, but a lot of those are older than 12 months old. But I don't want to dispute them because they're not hurting my credit score. Like, I still have like a 780 credit score. Some of them will organically fall off, but I truly have accounts with them and I didn't want to take the risk of getting those accounts shut down. Now on the business side, it's a different story, but you know, you can do with it as you will. But in regards to the order, you always want to apply for the inquiry sensitive banks first, and then you can apply for the other banks right online, late night, you know, I like applying late at night because you're up against a computer system but like mentioned before you always want to make sure that you don't have any fraud alerts or any reason why you wouldn't go through the automated system if you have a fraud alert it'll say that they have to call you so your application will be stopped and it'll be transferred to the underwriting department where they'll actually have to call you and verify you you don't want that okay if you are worried about someone using your credit, you can always keep your files locked. And then when you're about to apply for something, unlock them three business days prior. You want to give it enough time to populate. And then after you're done with your funding sequence or your credit card stacking, then you can go ahead and lock them again. Okay. But you want to give it about three business days for it to fully populate. Sometimes that's not enough. Honestly, I've seen that happen, but most of the time it is. So if you're worried about that, you know, try to give it five days, but plan it accordingly. Know exactly what banks you're going to be going to, to apply for credit cards that pull from Experian, TransUnion, and from Equifax. And in part one of the credit card stacking masterclass, I actually provided you with a lenders list. So you can actually go to those banks and that I provide you with what credit bureaus that they are going to be using to pull your credit. So that way you guys can, you know, plan accordingly. And if they do have a pre-qualification, some banks do, some banks don't. If they do offer some sort of pre-qualification, it'll be right there on their website where you can actually pre-qualify right on their website. And there's no hard inquiry until you actually accept the offer. And if you're pre-qualifying, uh, you can just add that to your list. You don't have to apply right then and there. Okay. So make sure everything's ready to go get it all planned out and then execute because this is exactly what the funding companies do. And I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of the banks that I shared with you on my lenders list, 
that is from though that's from a funding company those are some of the go-to places that these funding companies are shotgunning your credit applications for and all that they're doing is filling out credit applications for you but guess what they know what data and what information to put into the credit card applications sometimes it's not always the truth but again you know who is going to give somebody a fifty thousand dollar credit card that only makes fifty thousand dollars a year sounds like a risk to me okay you have to look at it in the eyes of the bank do the do you really think that a bank is going to give someone a fifty thousand dollar credit card when they only make 50k a year a uh, very high unlikelihood okay so you know that the income that was put on the application was false period okay but that's neither here or there providing inconsistent information on several applications now you think that the banks don't have enough technology where they know information before you apply they absolutely do okay most of these major banks they gather data and they share data they share data with the credit bureaus they share data with other uh, data companies like check systems early warning lexus nexus all of these different data companies it's a multi-trillion dollar business so a lot of times they know information about us it might not be a hundred percent correct but it's in that realm, right? So you wanna make sure that when you are going through a funding sequence, when you are applying for funding at the same, around the same time, that you put all of the same information. Your employer's name has to be the same. Your name, your address, your phone number, your income, everything needs to be consistent across the board or else you could get denied because again, they usually know this data before they see your application. They just wanna see what you're gonna put on your application. Now, of course, some of the data that they have on file might not be 100% accurate, but that's why they have you fill out the application. Sometimes they'll compare the information that they have to what you put on your profile. And that's why a lot of the times it's no doc because the data that they have on file matches what you put. Now, if it doesn't match, that's when they say, oh, well, this doesn't match what we have on file for them. Uh, let's go ahead and request tax returns so we can make sure that they're telling the truth. You know, you have to think about these things. Now let's talk about the fun side of credit card stacking. I went over the risks because again, guys, I wanna give you the information that you need to know, not what you want to hear. Because if it was all so easy and if it was all, you know, what these people made it seem to be that are on YouTube talking about credit right now, everyone would have perfect credit. Everyone would have millions of dollars from credit, but it's not that simple, my friend. I'm telling you the real, because if you knew better, you would do better. So make sure that you have subscribed to my channel, Credit Coach Nicole Scott, because again, guys, I'm giving you everything totally real when it comes to personal credit and business credit. I don't want to provide you with anything that might be false leading just to get a sale because I'm not going to provide you with information that you want to hear. If someone's saying, oh yeah, I could do that. Oh yeah, I could do that. Red flag, red flag. Okay. It's not that easy. Okay. I, I'm, I remember somebody left a comment on my page and I don't remember it, well, who it was, but shout out to you. Guys, again, leave comments below because it helps this information reach a wider audience. And this is the information that people need to know. A lot of people gravitate to the information that they want to hear. But guess what? It's not that easy. Okay. So make sure that you engage with the video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Subscribe to the channel, guys, because... I appreciate you. Thank you so much. But uh, he asked a question, which was, why does why do when people talk about credit and cleaning their credit, they make it seem like it's so easy? Like, oh yeah, just clean your credit over the next thirty to ninety days. And when I read that, I literally chuckled to myself because I'm like, I feel the same way. Like all these gurus and these million dollar brands, they go, oh, just clean up your credit, sixty to ninety days. You can just clean up your credit using the um you know, debt validation letter or the 609 letter and yeah, just clean your credit and you're good. Like if it was really that easy, 
again, everyone would have excellent credit, but it's not. And um, guys, guess what? Stop listening to people about the law who are not lawyers. Okay. I don't know how else I can say this in the nicest manner possible, but do not take legal advice from someone who is not a licensed consumer attorney or a licensed attorney. I am not an attorney. I do not give legal advice, but I do recommend that you seek legal advice from a licensed professional who specializes in consumer law. If you have questions about consumer law, do not listen to someone who is not a licensed professional. Everyone has their opinion of the law, but again, that's not going to hold up in court. Someone's opinion, someone's outlook of the law, someone, how they interpret the law. No, that, that, stop it. Stop it. Stop. Oh, okay. Pros and cons of credit card stacking. Let's get into it. No collateral. I always tell you, if you are looking to obtain credit, generally you're going to need three things. If you're looking to get, you know, business loans or lines of credit, you're going to need credit, collateral, or cash. What that means is you're going to need personal credit and you're going to need business credit if it's on the business side. You're going to need cash flow. Okay. If you don't have cash flow, it's a problem. That's why going after these business credit cards is a lot easier because they don't require any collateral. They don't require documents for the most part, unless of course your income is just out of this world and they don't believe you, but there's no collateral required. Okay. So that's the great thing about it. It is 100% unsecured credit meaning you don't have to put up your house. You don't, because with the SBA, they want collateral. Okay. They want some sort of collateral. They want credit. They want everything. They damn near want a blood sample. Okay. So there is no uh, collateral when it comes to business credit cards or personal credit cards for the most part. Okay. With business credit cards, that's really where it's at. You want to go after the 0% interest business credit cards. But of course you have to have, you know, at least six personal credit cards that have a 24 month history. You know, not all of them need to be quite at 24 months, but that's kind of like, you know, the, where you want to be is 24 months of history with credit cards on your personal side. So again, you can have comparable credit so the bank can look at you and go, they're good. We don't see any signs of financial distress. They paid everything on time. They don't even use their credit. So of course they don't look like they need the credit. We'll give them 50 stacks. No problem. Okay. That's what you want to look like. Another pro enables companies to benefit from the various introduction rates of 0%. So if you get a 0% interest business credit card, it is going to provide you with anywhere from 12 to 24 months of no interest for your business purchases. Okay. And that's amazing. So what that means is like, we're getting business credit cards that don't report to our personal credit. So guess what? They're, that utilization is not going to report to our personal credit. Now, utilization is important on the business side, but it's not as important on the personal side. So that's why I like to go after business credit cards because they don't report to your personal credit. Once our personal credit is built up and it's clean, like for me, I'm not adding any more personal credit cards. I'm good. I've got all that I need on the business, I'm sorry, on the personal side. Now it's time to just focus on the business side and get those business credit cards because you can have multiple businesses, 10, 20, 30 businesses if you really wanted to, and you can get business credit cards under each of those different corporations or LLCs. Okay. You really just need to be able to have a solid, really solid personal credit profile. Okay. And we went over the data points in part one of this video. If you haven't watched part one, I'll leave the link below in the description so you can watch part one. But this is great because you'll have zero interest for anywhere from 12 to 24 months. Generally, a lot of these cards are offering 
anywhere from 12 to 18 months of 0% interest. So you can leverage this credit card for the next 12 to 24 months without having to pay any interest on your purchases or your spend on those particular credit cards. Now here's another con because I talked about my credit card tracking log and I'll leave a link below for you guys to get that. But basically this is when you get multiple credit cards and credit products, it is going to require you as the borrower to keep an eye on the number of credit cards with the various interest rates, the introduction offers, the payment due dates. You got to stay on top of all of this because you cannot get a late payment. Okay. You need to make sure everything is set up on auto pay. Again, guys, if you knew better, you would do better. You have to make sure you pay everything on time. Even one late payment can ruin everything. So you, my friend, Please, for the love of God, put auto pay on. You might not trust it, but just do it for the minimum amount due because we cannot get a late payment. On the business side, you don't have that 30 day cushion. Okay. It's due when it's due. You need to pay the bill by the due date. That is the number one factor on the personal and the business side when it comes to credit. So make sure that you are organized. If you can't manage a lot at the same time, go slow. Okay. You do not need to go at a fast pace. Okay. You do not need to apply for three to five cards per bureau. If you're not going to be able to manage it, go maybe two cards per bureau. Okay. Because that's six cards in total and that's a more manageable number. Now you can totally credit card stack. You do not need to pay a funding company. Funding companies are actually going to charge you anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. On average, I usually see credit card companies or funding companies charging about a 15 percent success fee for simply filling out credit card applications in your name and putting the information on there. Now, what you need to do to avoid that is to simply do it yourself and be educated. I provide coaching so that way you can get these credit cards and you don't need to pay 15 or 20% of whatever you're getting approved for. So if you get approved for a $50,000 credit card, guess what? If someone's charging you a 10% fee, how much is that? A lot. So you're paying someone and let me just do the math for you guys. So you guys can see it firsthand. So you get a $50,000 credit card. Okay. And you have a funding company that's charging a 10% success fee. That's $5,000. So you're paying someone $5,000 to do something that you could have done yourself. That's That's insane to me. That's insane to me. I don't feel right about it. I don't believe in it. I don't agree with it. If you want to find a funding company to do it for you because you simply just feel like you absolutely can't, that's one thing. But honestly, like my coaching is way less expensive than that. Okay. And it comes with my personal credit course, which is like how to start a credit repair business, how to fix your credit and start a credit repair business, my business credit course, and then my Turo rental car course. So all of those courses come with the coaching plan. I'll leave a link below if you are interested in signing up with coaching and it comes with six sessions. We can get a lot done because each session is 90 minutes recorded live on zoom and we can make sure that we go through everything, make sure you're set up right and ready to apply. So first thing that you want to do is get pre-qualified. We talked about going to the websites seeing if they offer some sort of pre-qualification on their website so you can make note of that. Keep proper records, write everything down, have a little journal. You know, I have so many different little journals that I have kept in the past and, you know, just keep one at a time. You can just get a three ring binder journal or one of those spiral journals for now, um, a college ruled one and just write down everything. So you have everything documented like, okay, I applied on you know, the Discover website for a personal credit card on, you know, September 4th of 2023. And I was pre-qualified, you know, keep good notes because most of these banks, you can actually pre-qualify right directly on their website, but you don't 
need to apply for it right then and there. You're not going to get a hard inquiry because pre-qualifications are a soft pull. Now, it doesn't mean that you're absolutely 100% approved. What that means is based on the soft poll data that they were able to gather on you that you were approved, okay? So get pre-qualified, you know, understand the requirements for some of these banks. If you are applying for Chase, make sure to put that as number one because you don't want to apply for anyone else before you apply for Chase. They do have that 524 rule, which is if you have applied for more than five cards in the last 24 months, it is a no-go unless it's on the business side and you apply directly with a business banker, okay? So next step is you wanna choose the credit cards that you want to apply for. You wanna select the right cards based on the fees, based on the rewards, based on the requirements, who they pull credit from, so on and so forth. Not everybody is gonna be able to use every credit bureau because they might not have a perfect credit profile with certain bureaus. So if you are best off on Equifax, I gave you a ton of Equifax banks that you could potentially use. And let me just share with you guys a few more Equifax banks because right now what I've noticed is a lot of people have a really good Equifax credit score right now because Equifax is still playing ball when it comes to credit repair. But the other bureaus are being so difficult. That's why I say you gotta repair your own credit. And if you need to learn how to repair credit, then get with me, get, get some coaching because I'm telling you the only way that you can truly successfully repair your credit is if you do it yourself. Okay. I'm going to just be honest with you and you really have to know what you're doing. Um, you can use AI chat GBT to generate your dispute letters, but they need to sound like they're from a real person, meaning they're actually from you. Okay. They're postmarked from your area. Um, so on and so forth. So some additional Equifax banks, uh, you're looking at Equifax, Equifax banks, you're looking at SkyPoint Federal Credit Union, AG Fed Credit Union, Langley, Chevron Federal Credit Union. I actually have Chevron, DCU, we talked about them earlier, Wood Forest National Bank, NRL Federal Credit Union, NIH Federal Credit Union, Justice Federal Credit Union, PenFed Federal Credit Union. PenFed is really only on the personal side. So those are some really great banks when it comes to Equifax. Now, obviously there's a ton of banks out there to choose from and watch some of my other business videos where I show you exactly where to go and how to do all of that stuff. But again, guys, if you need more assistance, hand-holding, coaching, sign up using the link below. I am offering this limited deal until the end of the month. But again, I do not have a whole lot of openings. I'm actually getting ready to close the one-on-one -on -one coaching because I already have too many clients. So make sure that you sign up as soon as possible because again, I, I'm only one person. I can only handle so many clients and although I wanna help everyone, I just can't take everyone on, okay? So next step is submit the application. Again, open up the three different browser windows. Depending on the issuer, may either submit applications in online or visit a branch to apply. Again, Chase is one of those you want to apply in person. And Truist, I would recommend to apply in person with them as well because they are getting stricter and stricter. They actually blew up by everyone's content online. So you want to apply in person and that way, if for some reason you are declined, you can have the banker help you with the reconsideration. I, li I literally just had a client that um, applied with PenFed. He was declined. And when we went after the reconsideration, they were saying, oh, we don't offer reconsiderations. Since when? Like, since when? That's crazy. But that was with PenFed. Every bank is different. And honestly, I think that some banks make the rules up as they go along. And that's the thing about credit. Things are always changing 
And what might be relevant today might not even be relevant tomorrow because banks are always changing up their different, you know, policies, procedures, all that BS. They're always changing it because they're always trying to stay 10 steps ahead of us. Okay. Soon as a hack is leaked on social media or YouTube, believe me, the banks know about it and they're working on trying to stop it. Okay. Once you've submitted your application, you're going to receive your credit cards in the mail. It's simple as that. If for some reason they say, oh, we're going to, you know, process, you'll hear from us in seven to 10 days. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a no, but that's why you want to make sure before you apply, there are no fraud alerts. Your credit profile is structured properly. Everything has updated on your credit reports. So all of your balances have updated. Okay. I had a client recently, they applied for credit way too soon. He's like, Oh, well I paid my credit cards off. And then when he applied, he was declined because guess what? The credit card balances had not updated on his credit report yet. So please don't be in a rush when you're in a rush and you try to rush things. It's never going to work out. If you need money and you look like you need money, the banks aren't going to give you money. They want to give money to people that are low risk that don't look like they need the money. Okay. That's just how it is. Unfortunately, use business cards to fund your business, to buy things for your business, invest in whatever it is that you want to invest in your business. That pretty much goes over everything when it comes to decoding credit card stacking and how it's all done. Done. That's exactly what the funding companies are doing for you. They're just submitting your application to these different financial institutions, which you could totally do yourself. But like I showed you in the math earlier, if you get a 50 K credit card, you're paying someone $5,000 for that. And that was just on a 10%. What if that same funding company, you got a 50,000, let's see, Hold on, let's do simple math. $50,000 credit card, one, two, three. And again, 50K is usually what you're gonna go up to without any sort of proof or you know collateral or anything like that. You can usually go up to about 50K. I've seen people go up to a little higher, 80, 70, but usually 50 is about that, that mid range, right? So in order for you to get a 50 K credit card, you need to have at least a 10 to a $15,000 personal credit card. The higher personal credit card that you have, the easier it is going to be for you to get higher limit business credit cards. So again, you've got to have comparable credit. So you can usually three to five X your highest trade line on your personal side that is in your name. Now adding authorized user trade lines is going to help you get higher limits on the personal side, which helps you get higher limits on the business side. Okay. But if you were paying a funding company, say the average right now is about 15%. So 50,000. So if you're paying a funding company, 15% of all of the credit that they acquire for you, you're going to be paying a funding company $7,500 for getting you a $50,000 credit card. They will send you an invoice for that amount. And if you don't pay it, they will just destroy your credit. So you literally have to pay it $7,500 for a $50,000 in credit. And that's a credit card. That might not even be worth it. Will it? At any rate, it's not worth it. You could totally do it yourself, pay for a little bit of coaching. Coaching is going to be a way better experience for you because you're going to understand the process. Now, if you haven't by now, guys, make sure that you have liked and subscribed to my channel, Credit Coach Nicole Scott, because again, guys, I'm giving you the information that you need to know, not what you want to hear for me to make a sale. Because if you knew better, you would do better. And that's exactly what I give you is the information. You can take it. You can 
literally all you have to do is take action and do better. Make sure you pay everything on time. Make sure that you are managing everything properly. Watch part one and part two to the credit card stacking masterclass. And I appreciate you guys so much. Thank, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Again, if you haven't, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel because guess what? I am always coming out with new videos in regards to personal credit and business credit because if you knew better, you would do better. So stay tuned for more and watch the playlist coming up next.